Oh, it's on. Oh, that's a good one. That's a real good one. Plastic fishing is all about having that long cast so you can get away from the boat. You're targeting fish in shallow water. You need to sneak up on them. Um, oh, and we're on. Oh, this might be an all right snap. I won't say what I was going to say because it's probably not appropriate. <laughs> yeah, blue mowing. Keep the sinker from bashing on the knot. Create a little bit of light so it intrigues the fish in the dark water, in deeper water. And also keep the sinker away from the hook so a fish can come up and eat your bait without getting knocked in the nose by a big bit of lead. When you're in the right spot and doing the right thing, you'll catch fish pretty quick. It's not, there's no rocket science about it. Like I'm not the smartest dude. It's just a lot of time fishing, a lot of time learning from my mistakes and a lot of research. Don't forget to hit that like button if you like some of the content I'm creating and um, some of the tips I'm giving you guys. It will help you with your fishing. I can guarantee you start using these rigs instead of your pedonoscus, you will catch more fish. It's just that simple. Just come out for a quick little session this afternoon. Um, it's about lunchtime now, 12 o'clock. We're going to fish up to about 4, 4.30 maybe. Um, just going to throw some plastics around for some snapper um, and we'll see how we go, hey? Just getting ready, still putting the mics and camera and stuff on, but I'll just do a quick little intro now and um, we'll get into it in a sec. Lime, tiger, glow, gulp, 100 mil minnow. These ones are a little bit, this is why I bought them, they're a little bit lighter in colour than some of the other ones I've got. I find this lighter colour definitely works well, but I think it's just natural variation in the actual plastics when they're making them, they don't design them. They try to make them all the same, it's just the way they some batches come out, they're a little bit lighter than others. There he is there, ready to go. Get our first cast in. So we're running, what are we in? 70 foot of water, we're sort of on the back edge of this um, reef system. So I've cast out, I'm just doing my count, I'm probably up to about 15, 16. I might actually just go and try and reposition this boat. There's a bit more west in this wind than I thought there was going to be. It's going to get pretty gnarly over the next week or so. It's going to start raining and come up with a heap of onshore wind. So I thought I might as well get a quick session in now while it's not raining. So it's a little bit shallower here. We're back up to about 50 foot. I got a little bit of bait there too. If I don't have much luck with the plastics in the next hour or so, I'll go drop some baits down, get a few snappers that way. So just checking the weather observations. Barometer is, well, pretty stable. 1,016 hegapascals, 1,017. Um, while I'm here, I'll check the moon phase for you so you know what moon phase it is. I don't know. Anyway, it's um, what well, we're on. Got something. Seven days after the full moon, got a little butcher's prick, nothing too spectacular. Get him off and get another cast in. This rod's a Samurai Reaction, uh, carbon fibre rod. Same thing, it's got the 45 wrap both ways. Keeps it nice and round, nice and stiff, super light. Um, you'll see in the footage when I cast, my rods that travel the furthest will definitely flatten out and straighten out quicker than some of the other rods that are not quite as good a casters, but it's all about getting that rod to straighten out and go stiff so when the line's feeding out through the guides, it's not catching the guides when it's wobbling up and down. That just, the wobble just creates friction on your line and gives you a smaller, smaller cast distance. So, plastic fishing is all about having that long cast so you can get away from the boat. You're targeting fish in shallow water. You need to sneak up on them. Um, oh, and we're on. Oh, this might be an all right snaps. Well, he's not pulling line, but I got my drag set pretty tight. He's a little snaps, all right. Not a big fish, but snapper all the same. So we've probably been here 10 minutes now. That would be, that's our first plastic still. That would be our first legal fish if you wanted to keep a few. There he is there, not a big fish. He'd just be legal maybe. Not much in it. 
plastic's still good to go. Not too, a little bit of a tear in it there, but that doesn't really matter. So what was that? That was third cast. We got first, first legal fish for the morning. That's not too bad. All right, so we're a fair way off the reef now. I'll go back around and I'll start that drift again. Um, like I said, we're traveling pretty quick, even though there's not much wind, we're still covering a lot of ground. Oh, we've got a shark on the water just over here. Oh, it's coming at the boat. Oh, there he goes, he's just ducked under. Hopefully you got a bit of a look at him. Wasn't a huge fish, but he'd probably be six, seven foot. So you can see the reef that we're trying to fish here. You can see the shadows behind these larger boulders, undulating heights in the bottom. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much what we're targeting. When I'm looking for snapper in shallow waters and I'm um, fishing new spots, I'm looking for bits of reef that look like this on my side scan. So I want those larger rocks, gives fish the opportunity to hide either side of them these rocks mainly run, you can see the direction that they actually run in, the ridge lines with the shadows behind them. So I've still got me tiger lime on the other rod, I'll put a pumpkin seed on this one. Still running that same shape, that 100mm minnow. It's my favourite shape out of all the plastics. The nemesis is a really good shape and the fat grub do pretty well as well, but I just find the, um, the, the tails on the fat grubs and the nemesis get eaten a fair bit. Target species but we've just caught ourselves a little mac tuna with the plastic. There he is there. Beautiful little fish. I'll send him on his way, we don't need to keep him. Get that pumpkin seed out of his mouth. They're pretty old those pumpkin seeds so they look a bit funny but Got him this time. It's another snappers. Oh, did I just? Oh, you're kidding. It wasn't a big fish, so it doesn't really matter. Not the end of the world. I had a pretty good hit there a second ago, and that's what's happened to me, plastic. I just could feel that something wasn't right. I thought he would have come back and eat it, and it, but it wouldn't have been swimming real well. Plenty of marks coming across the sounder there. Get another cast in quickly. cast them with the wind um, we're drifting this way I'm casting across my drift but um, yeah it's just a bit easier than casting over the way over the nose of the boat with the way we're sitting and drifting all right guys so we've just changed spots we've just come to a, the next point along put the first cast in I've got something straight away oh, another sergeant baker not target species but Pretty little fish all the same. We won't muck around with him for too long. Try one of these tiger limes in the crazy legs. You can see they're a slightly different colour to these new ones that I've just bought. The orange is not as bright in the new ones. Um, I think that's a slightly better colour than these, but you, like I said, you don't have much choice. You just get what you get. Oh. That, that plastic sitting on there really well. That one just floated out, didn't spin, didn't move, just floated the whole way. When they just float out on your cast, you know you got them on there right. You know they're gonna swim well. All right, on again. Not sure what this is gonna be. It's not, not a big fish. Probably another Sergeant Baker, and it is. But still, it's two fish and two casts. Goes to show that they work. <coughs> Pop him off, plastic's still good to go. With these plastics too, another tip is Get them out, don't leave them sitting down under your boat floor or in a bag or anything. Get them out, put them up on the dash, let them take in that heat from the sun and the light from the sun and they'll glow right up. 
If they're nice and warm, I find that the scent comes out of them a lot better. You get a lot more bites when they've been sitting on the dash and they're warm when you put them on. Um, definitely if they've got some kind of glow element in them, they need to be out in the sun to um, pick up pick up a bit of light and get charged up so they um, glow right up when they're down in the water column. Don't mind listening to the few tunes while I'm fishing. Uh, I don't think it puts the fish off. Loud bangs and thumps on your boat will definitely scare the fish, but a bit of music doesn't seem to make any difference. Oh no! I think we that was that felt like a pretty good hit that one. Oh, we're on. Pretty sure we got another little snaps here. Oh, no way. I've just popped the hook on him. Unbelievable. It's just one of those days sometimes where you're getting the hits and you're hooking the odd fish. I just can't seem to keep them connected. I don't know what's, what's going on. It's almost two o'clock, so. We'll give this another 15, 20 minutes, and then we might go out and drop a couple of baits down for some snaps. We're just gonna head out now a little bit wider, go pick one of these wider reefs to go have a fish on. They in here on the sander, so these darker areas, they are sand or a softer sort of bottom. That white return that you can see on the side screen, we got it zoomed right out to 300 foot, is um, a harder return, so that's, rock or a gravel or something um, as you can see as soon as we've come across this little lump here the fish have started to appear so we're going to have a drop down here um, I'm right out wide as you can see I'm sitting in nearly 200 foot of water um, but we're going to give it a go here I'll just spin the boat around and uh, we'll get our baits out not sure how we'll go here but um, Got to be in it to win it, and we'll see what happens. Just give you a quick rundown on the bait we're using. Just three little bits of squid around the circle hook, little tiny glow ball, little 80 gram sinker. Nothing too spectacular, pretty simple rig, but effective. All right, so we've just dropped baits down. I've come out a bit wider. I'm straight onto a fish. Um, I need to tighten my drag just a little bit on this rod. Not sure what we've hooked into, but didn't take very long. Hey, I've only just dropped that bait down. I was just getting ready to rig up another rod. Oh. And we've actually just dropped that fish. Oh, that's all right, we'll drop down again. Probably won't take too long. Oh, something's grabbed it now. Oh, we're onto a better one. Oh, I haven't got the microphone set up yet, so the, the sound might be a little bit dodgy. But I'll turn him on now. Oh, I'm out of batteries in the other one. There you go, guys. So we've just changed tact. We've just come out wide. Looking for some better fish. Um, just mark this spot. It's actually right on top of a previous mark. Um, I'd say this is going to be a snapper or a mowie. No record breakers, no PBs, that's for sure, but quality fish. Kilo, kilo and a half. Give him up here and give you a bit of a look. Coming up now, so I'd say he's gonna be a snapper. There he is there. Nice little fish. 
he's not going to release real well, so we'll take him home. But I'll give him to my parents for a feed. There he is there. Beautiful little fish. Quite a little snaps. Not the world's biggest fish, but fish all the same. It's probably about 45 centimetres, 40 centimetres. Well, we've just come back up past that mark where I caught the first fish and dropped a couple of baits down and we've actually, they're both on to fish. Uh, not sure what they are. The other one's going off there as well, just sitting in the rod holder. Another little snaps. Not a big fish. I would imagine it be another legal one. It's not a bad one. We've got another fish. We'll send him on his way, see what's on this other rod. All right, so that second rod, second bait that was in the water before, still got a fish on it. I'm just pulling him up now. We've got the other GoPro working. And the other rod's getting bites back there by the looks of it. Oh, there you go. Another little snaps. Another little snappers. Not a massive fish, but um, not a bad one. Hopefully he releases okay. Well, not the world's biggest fish. We'll see how he goes. There he goes. It's usually the case. The little ones seem to get back down, no problem. Some of the bigger ones are the ones that don't really want to go back down. We got a, we got a good one on here. I reckon this is going to be a pretty nice snaps. It's on the way up now. Just remember, it's never a race when you're pulling fish in. Eh? Just take your time. Slow and steady, nice and smooth. Always keep that bend in your rod. Don't ever let, and let your rod straighten out. That's when they'll throw the hooks on you. Oh, here he is here. A little bit bigger than the last, last one, the first one we got out here. There he is. Oh. There he is there. Another little, good little snaps. I think he's probably another 40, 45. Good little panties, good little eating size. We'll get another bait down there. So there's the rig that we caught that one on. Same as all the others. They're new bits of bait. Three independent little bits of squid around the circle hook, just pinned. Ball sinker, little glow, bead. That's all you need. So you can see here how close we are actually to our other marks. Those range lines that you can see there are 20 metres. So we were within 20, oh, we're on again. That looks like a good fish too. Oh, another good snapper. So I'd probably say, while we're getting them on this one and we're not getting them on the other rod at the moment, is because the glow bead's been eaten off the other one. You know, that glow bead just goes down there, stands out, glows up down there in the dark and fish coming to investigate what that little glowing object is and see the bits of cuttlefish or squid sitting there and just gobble them up. Sorry, I probably got the reel in your face there. Here he comes, bit of colour, similar size to that first one. Um, he's going pretty hard still, we might release this guy, hey? There's the... Um, Set up just there, just in the corner of his mouth, eh? That's why I love these circle hooks, eh? Hey? All the time, just there in the corner. Roll them out, no worries at all. Fish might have a bit of a sore mouth, but he's going to survive, no worries. We'll send him on his way. He's out of there. Straight back down to the bottom. So the thing is with these videos, what I'm trying to do is just film the whole fishing experience for you. I might not always get the boat launch or the drive to the boat ramp, but I usually get that camera on pretty quick and give you a quick spool before I even start fishing. So um, you know what I'm thinking at the time, you get the plan of what I'm gonna try and do for the day. Um, as the day goes on and things evolve, either I'm successful or I'm not successful, and that will determine my next course of action. Either I'll stay and keep catching fish if I'm catching fish, 
if I'm not catching fish, then I'll move on and I'll try something else. Um, that's pretty much what it's about, you know. Have faith in your techniques and what you're doing, and if you're not catching fish doing what you think's gonna work, change, do something else. Don't keep doing the same thing and expect a different result. If you, if you go soft baiting and you're fishing for snapper and there's fish under the boat, and you don't catch them in the first 10, 20 casts, change plastics. If that doesn't work for you, change location. If that doesn't work for you, try something different. Go for bait, go out wide, go do something. Just mix it up. Little trick that I got going on, throw the towel over the rail, sit your sinkers up there, sit whatever you want up there. It won't roll around, won't move. It'll stay perfectly still for you. Um, Nothing worse than trying to tie a rig or something and your sinker's rolling up and down the gunnel or you have to hold it. All right, so I've got a little glow bead back on there, ready to go. Three bits of squid. It's a pretty simple rig, but very effective. You can see a lot of other dudes use pen and Oscar rigs and stuff like that. I find this works better for catch and snapper and you don't lose as many hooks. So you get those little leather jackets, those school of leather jackets come through. If you're fishing a Pan and Oscar rig, pretty much guarantee you're going to lose both your hooks. This way, because I use the little overheads to drop them down, I control the fall rate and it just keeps the sinker hard up against that glow ball all the way down. So they, fish will generally be there trying to eat the bait. They won't swim around the back and bite you off here. They'll always be trying to eat up here. So have that glow ball there, a little glow bead, creates a bit of lumo down there. Also keeps your sinker away from your bait a bit. Allows that fish to come up and grab onto the bait and eat that hook and get it inside its mouth without having the sinker bashing around on its nose. So don't forget to hit that like button if you like some of the content I'm creating and um, some of the tips I'm giving you guys. It will help you with your fishing. I can guarantee you start using these rigs instead of your pen and Oscars, you will catch more fish. You just gotta learn your spots. Once you know your spots, you know where you're heading to. Don't persist doing the same thing for too long if it's not working, mix it up. That's the most key element you can take from these videos is don't persist doing something if it's not working, change. Like you can see, I started off thickening plastics in close today. I spent that hour in there doing that didn't work. I've come out here, dropped some baits down, caught two quality keeper fish about 45 centimetres in half an hour. I've kept two, I've let another three go, probably another two of them would have been legal fish if you really wanted to keep them. So you can see when you're in the right spot and doing the right thing, you'll catch fish pretty quick. It's not, there's no rocket science about it. Like I'm not the smartest dude. It's just a lot of time fishing, a lot of time learning from my mistakes and a lot of research. So I'm trying to condense everything that's in my brain into some short videos for you guys to watch and um, learn a few tips and tricks and uh, hopefully it works for you. Well, we've lost the reef again. So I'm just gonna drive back up. You can see that's where I finished my first drift. Just had our second drift. About to duck up for our third drift. Uh, same thing, all the fish are in that one corner, eh? They're all sitting around that mark. I've caught all my fish within 50 metres of that first fish. They haven't moved anywhere, they're still sitting there. So you can just, if you had a spot lock or an anchor and you wanted to lift it up and down in 200 odd foot of water, which I definitely don't want to do, you could probably throw your anchor out in the right spot drift back onto this school of fish and just catch one after another after another. Um, I generally don't want to pull my anchor up and down in this sort of depth of water, so I rarely fish on the anchor. Um, I just can't be bothered, hey? I just do me drift fishing, it works. Um, yeah, just move your boat every 20 minutes, half an hour, back up onto your school of fish, back onto your reef. You can see the reef coming back on. There's a school of fish off to the side. That's definitely a school of fish. You can see the individual marks. So we're sitting 300 foot. They're sitting off the back edge of the reef. Here's the reef starting to come up. You can see the difference that you see in the sand bottom compared to your gravel. If you zoom in here on this little lump, you can see those shadows created. 
Now you've got to remember we're in some pretty deep water here, so if you're seeing little shadows in this sort of depth water, there's a reasonable hidey hole behind that rock. It's a fair chunk of reef. Um, shallower water, your shadows will appear bigger because of the angle that you're shooting out on. But when you're in 200 foot of water and I'm shooting out 300, me 300 foot wide, I'm only getting sort of a 100 foot strip. And the angle that I'm picking that up on is, uh, you know, it's going to be, what am I in, 200 foot and I'm getting 300. It'll be about a 30, 30 degree angle from plumb underneath the boat. So pretty much all the fish that we've caught have been on this back edge of that reef. Um, so the, you can see that it's pretty flat, just gravel through this section. And then on that back edge where we're getting all the fish, that's where the reef becomes a bit gnarlier, a few more bumps in it, a few more rocks, a few more bummies. And that just gives perfect ambush spots for those predators to sit and wait, wait for something to swim past, a little bait fish or a squid or whatever and um, they just come straight out and jump on him and it's all over for that little fish. So it's going to be the third or fourth one of these little suckers I've actually caught today. You can see the teeth on them. Um, if they were capable of getting to that line they'd just be biting it off straight away. So I haven't lost a single rig due to things biting it off. So it just goes to show that this system works really well. You don't have to go through too many rigs. So um, yeah, I'll get another bait down there. All right guys, so we um, lost a couple of rigs back on that other reef. I've just moved off that one, moved up to a different spot. Just gonna throw one of my kingfish setups down. Um, it's getting a few hits there at the moment. Semi-decent sort of fish on the heavier gear. I think it's going to be another pretty good snapper. Just try and reposition my hands a bit here for you. I've got to try and move this camera if I can. I don't really want to take my hands off the rod because... I don't really want to lose the fish. Try and get my hands out of this other camera's face. So I was just getting bites and not getting hookups. So what I did was just flick it out of gear. And the other rod's on now too. That looks like it. Oh, no way. There's another snapper fish. I think we had a better one on that lighter setup, but. And more pharmacists like us recommend for dry and sensitive skin. That's QV. Another quality little fish. Feel assured, feel QB. Send him on his way. Oh, look, he might still be on there. Something's on there anyway. See, it just, it just paid to just leave it down there. Even though I thought I'd pop that last fish, he popped himself off. I don't know whether he did or he didn't, but either way, he hasn't thrown the hook in that time or we've picked up another one. So as far as legal fish go, this would probably be legal fish six. If I get him up, um, I know none of them have been the biggest snappers I've ever caught or the biggest ones I've got on film for you, but still, quality little fish. I'll just get the net for him. Only got light leader here. It's hooked just in the corner of the mouth again beautifully. I'm just got to flick this other bale arm over, I think. That's on as well, is it? There's something on there. It's not massive. I'll just put it back in the rod holder. Get this one sorted. Get him out and back in the water. There he is there. That other one looks like a... I'll put another bait on this one. We'll pull this other fish back up. Just on this bait, we only just dropped him down. See what kind of size fish this one is. Don't think it's going to be a massive fish, but should be all right. 
It always pays just to have the two baits in the water. Oh, did he just pop off? Oh, no way. He just popped off, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. There you go. Well, that didn't really go to plan. That's all right. We'll just drop that same bait back down as it is. I probably should check to make sure that that barb hasn't got anything, any squid, um, squid skin or anything over the top of it. But while I um, tend to use squid and cuttlefish, it doesn't smell as much as fish baits. Um, so when times are tough or I feel like the water's a bit dirty, sometimes I'll put a bit of fish on there just to um, get a bite. And then also have the squid there. So if they take the fish off, they might turn around and come back around for the squid. I'll put another bit of fish on. Oh, we're getting bites on that other rod. Oh, it's on. Oh, that's a good one. That's a real good one. Oh. Ew. That's a quality fish, that one. It's not, I don't know, it might be in the three kilo range. Not fishing super tight drags. What I'll do is, while I'm fighting this fish, I'll drop this other rod back down because I don't really want that sinker sort of sitting mid-water for this guy to get tangled on as he's coming up. So I tried in close there for the old snapper fish. Didn't have much luck. So I've just come out wider with some baits and um, yeah, straight away started putting them in the boat. When I looked at the observations, the weather observations there earlier, I kind of thought there might not be too many in close because the barometer was sitting at 1,017 and generally when you get them in close, the barometer's pretty high. Oh, we've caught a Maui. Different species altogether. Not a massive fish at all. Geez, he went hard for his size. Oh, blue Maui, beautiful fish. There he is there. Get him in the net. Oh, he's tangled around the other line too. It's exactly what I didn't want to happen. All right, well, we better sort that out real quick. So there's another species of fish. Little blue Maui or rubber lip Maui. See why they call them rubber lip Maui. I've got these big, big, big lips. I won't say what I was going to say because it's probably not appropriate. <laughs> yeah, blue Maui. All right, guys, I've lost another rig, one of those rigs that I told you I wouldn't lose. I've lost another one, so on that note, I'm going to call it a day and head for home. Uh, go put the boat away and uh, clean the fish up. I might cook some fish up for me and Jasmine tonight for dinner. Um, either that or have what's left of the lamb roast. We'll see what she wants to do. Yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed today and um, I'll see you for the next day soon. <laughs>